Ah, greetings, math fans. All right, so this is day two of chapter six. And remember, chapter six is about systems of equations. So in our last uh, lesson, we basically learned how to find the solution by graphing the two lines. And where those two lines intersected, that's our solution. So I was really picky about plotting lots of points so you can get an exact look of um, you know where the two lines intersect. So our very first problem that we have here is just kind of a warm-up problem, so let's do that. All right, so I'm going to write each one kind of separately here so we can solve. And again, you guys need to be really good at solving for y and x, really, but you have to know how to solve for y in order to graph. Okay, so I'm going to add x to both sides. And you get 2y equals x plus 6, and then divide everything by 2. So y equals, and remember guys, x over 2 is the same thing as 1 over x, or 1 over 2x. I think it's easier if you write it that way, because then when you do rise over run, you see a fraction in front, as opposed to x over 2. They're like, oh, what's on top? Oh, you got to remember there's a 1 there. Okay? All right, so I get y equals 1 half x plus 3. Let's graph the other one, or solve the other one here. Subtract x. So 4y equals negative x plus 24 divide by 4 so y equals again that's a 1 there so it's negative 1 fourth x plus 6 okay so let's graph this one I'm gonna graph this one first one in red so I'm gonna go up 3 it's my y-intercept and remember the slope is 1 half so it's up 1 over 2 so up 1 over 2 just I'm gonna do several of those points I'm usually gonna go the other way down one to the left two you know again don't don't worry about going to the left and, and you'll know if you mess up because you'll have a point that's in a random location you know it's got to follow a straight line okay so that's pretty good and uh, so let's do this guy here in blue so I go up to six and the slope is negative one four so down one over one two three four oh look at that we got our point already okay so right here this is the intersection of those two so let me actually graph make the graph because that's what I want to ex expect from you guys okay and then the red all right and so your answer for this problem like I said is that uh, point right over here and that's gonna be uh, 4 comma 5 so that's your solution 4 comma 5 again X being 4 Y being 5 okay not bad, right? So, now here's the deal. The only issue that I have with uh, the graphing method is that, um, let's say you're you're not so careful with the points and you kind of sketch, sketch the lines and, are, and the lines don't um, aren't, aren't exact. Well, it's pretty hard actually if they're not exact to see where they intersect because if, if you're off by a little bit, you're off by one or two, that completely changes the answer and then you're wrong. Okay, so we have two other methods that we're going to learn how to solve systems of equations. The first method, which we're going to talk about today, is called substitution. Okay, so that's your that's what we're going to talk about today, substitution. And basically, this is just this first off is just like a little bit of practice, just to explain what substitution is. Literally, if y is equal to four, I am going to substitute that in for that y. So you get three times four plus eight. So you get twelve plus eight, and so my answer for this one is twenty. It's pretty easy, right? Same thing with this. I'm going to take that negative 3 where the y is. I'm going to plug it into there. So negative 2 times uh, negative 3 minus 4. So just be careful when you multiply. So you get positive 6 minus 4. My answer is 2. Okay, so that's substituting something in. So next, uh, number 3 here is I'm asking you to solve the following equations for x. We're going to substitute something in first. So I'm, I'm asking you to find out the value of x when y equals 2. So I'm going to take that 2 and I'm going to plug it into uh, the y there. So I get 2x plus 3 times 2 equals 20. So 2x plus 6 equals 20. Subtract 6. 2x equals 14. Divide by 2. x equals 7. That's all I'm asking you guys to do. Literally, I substituted that y in for that, the y there, that the same value, and then I solve for x. So this is the same thing, guys. I'm going to say y is equal to negative 2. I'm going to substitute that right in there. So I have negative x 
minus 2. It's really plus or negative 2, but just minus 2 equals 12. Okay, and then you could add 2 to both sides. So negative x equals 14. Divide by negative 1. x equals negative 14. Okay, pretty easy, right? Not bad. So that's all substitution. That's what we're doing here. It gets a little trickier, but not that much. So here's a couple of uh, couple tips. Let's just kind of read through this before I actually do a problem. Here's our strategy, okay? Uh, the first thing we're going to do is you're going to isolate a variable. So you're going to solve. When I say isolate, it means you solve for one of the variables first, either x or y, and whichever one's easier. So you're going to write that on there, easier variable. That's important. Okay, once you solve for that, you're going to plug that expression into another equation. Okay, and again, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, and then the third step is you want to solve for the remaining variable and then write it as an ordered pair. And then this is also helpful to check your answer. Okay, so let's kind of go through these steps here. And explain what I mean. Okay, so this is kind of a friendly problem, math fans, because this one's already solved. So I'm going to take this y and I'm going to plug it into that y there. So it's 2x plus y. Well, what's y? Oh, y is 3x. So instead of writing y there, I'm going to put it's equal there. Then it's equal to 3x, because I told you it was equal to 3x. Okay? So again, I'm, writing, I'm really writing this equation. So it's 2x plus 3x equals 10. That's this equation, except instead of y, I substituted the 3x in there. And then 2x plus 3 Now, okay, so uh, it's, this is already isolated. I plugged the expression in. This is what I did. Now I'm going to solve for the for the uh, uh, for the variable. So I get 5x equals 10 divided by 5. X equals 2. Okay, and then I'm going to take this 2 and I'm going to plug it into the other equation. I can actually plug it into either one of those equations. I get the same answer. But why would you not plug it into the one where it's solved for y? Okay, because it's easy. Then I say y equals 3x, so y equals 3 times 2, so y equals 6. And that's it. That's your answer. So your coordinate is 2, comma, 6. Pretty easy. Okay, and then if I want to check it, it's really easy to check it. Basically what I do is I plug it back into, let me erase this a little bit, I plug it back into the original equations, 2 and 6. So check this out. If I plug it back into the first one, 2 times 2 plus y, which is 6, does that equal 10? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 6 equals 10. Yep, 10 equals 10. That's good. And we did this already last, uh, just the last unit, right, where we checked it. And then for the next one, y equals 3x. So plug a 6 in for y, 3 times x, uh, 3 times 2. And so we get 6 equals 6, so that works out well as well. So that's a good way to check it. If you got a little bit of time, check your work. doesn't hurt. Okay, so let's do a couple more here. Okay, so basically here's the deal, math fans. This A is solved. It's solved for A. So what I can do is I can take the value of this A, which is B plus 1, and I can substitute it into that A right there. So instead of saying A plus 3B equals 9, I'm going to say A. Well, what's A? Oh, it's B plus 1. That's substitution. That's substituting is what, what I solve for here into the other equation. And then, and then I rewrite the rest of the equation. Plus 3b equals 9. So I combine like terms, and I get uh, 4b plus 1 equals 9. Subtract 1. So this is easy. 4b is equal to 8 and divide by 4. So b is equal to 2. Okay? And then... How easy it is, is it, it is now is literally I solve this variable, I plug it into the other equation that's solved. So for that b, I plug it into there. So it's a is equal to b plus 1. Okay, so b is 2. So a equals 3. And that's your answer. Okay, b is 2 and a is 3. Okay, so here's another one. y is equal to 1 plus x. So I'm, it's already solved, so I'm going to plug it into the y there. So instead of saying 3y, it's going to be 3 times 1 plus x. Right. And then I keep writing the rest of the equation. Plus x equals 7. 
So then I solve. 3 plus 3x plus x equals 7. So 3x plus 1x is 4x plus 3 equals 7. And subtract 3. So 4x equals 4. And divide by 4. x equals 1. Okay. And then how do you find y? Again, plug it back into the one that's already solved. Again, you could plug it into the bottom one, but why do that? Why make more work for yourselves? So uh, I basically get y equals... 1 plus x, so it's 1 plus 1, so y equals 2. And then I can put it as a coordinate. So it's 1 comma 2. Remember, it's x comma y. Okay, so 1 comma 2. Not bad. Okay, last two here. Um, again, I've solved for s. That's, it's a variable solved, and so I'm going to plug it into that s. So r minus 2. Now this is where we're using parentheses because we're multiplying 2 times s. Well, what's s? Negative 2r plus 3. That's s. So you put parentheses around it and that equals negative 1. And the reason you put parentheses is because I need to distribute that negative 2 to both those terms. So r, negative 2 times negative 2r is plus 4r. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 equals negative 1. Okay, it's important that you distribute. Really, really important. So 5r, 1r plus 4r, minus 6 equals negative 1. And I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So 5r equals 5, divide by 5, r equals 1. Okay, and remember I told you, plug it back into the one that's already solved. So s equals negative 2 r, or negative 2 times 1, plus 3. So s equals negative 2 plus 3, s equals 1. So r and s are both 1. Okay, and last problem, that y gets substituted into that y right there. So instead of saying 2y, uh, it's 2 parentheses 2x minus 4. Okay, equals negative x plus 2. All right, so again, I just substituted the y in that for this y right here. Okay, so it makes you distribute. So you get 4x minus 8 equals negative x uh, plus 2. And I'm going to... That's negative x here. So I'm going to add x to both sides, move the x to the left, and the numbers to the right. So that gives you 5x. That cancels, that cancels, and we get 5x equals 10. Okay, and then we divide both sides by 5. x is 2. Pretty sweet. And my last step, math fans, is plug the 2 into that equation right there. So y equals 2 times 2 minus 4. y equals 4 minus 4, or y equals 0. Okay, so I have my two answers here is uh, x equals 2 and y equals 0. Okay, so that's it for substitution math fans. Um, like I said, this is day one. The nice thing is, notice all these problems, um, it was all solved for already. Here it is. This is solved for, this is solved for, right? Uh, this one solve for and this one solve for. So tomorrow it's not going to be that easy. Tomorrow you're going to have to solve for the variable first. Okay, but it's not bad. We've done it before. That's just one extra step. All right, that's it, man fans. Have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.